Welcome to Module 3. In this module, we'll explore how chocolate first spread beyond Mesoamerica. We will examine first contact between the Old World and the New. If you recall, in the last module, we discussed how the Americas had developed in isolation for thousands of years. The great city-based cultures of Mesoamerica had flourished based on an agricultural system of New World crops, such as corn or maize, tomatoes, peppers, and of course, cacao. Beginning in the 16th century, however, Europe entered into a period of a so-called Age of Exploration, which would bring it into a collision course with the Mesoamerican world. As Europeans become introduced to chocolate, we will see how cultures assimilate new things. How chocolate not only crossed a geographical barrier, but also a cultural one too. But first we have to understand something of the historical context during which the Age of Exploration took place. Europe in the 16th century was a divided place. The Protestant Reformation had shattered the religious unity that Europe had experienced for much of the Middle Ages. Whole countries adopted one version of Christianity in opposition to others. They became either Protestant or Catholic. Religious wars became common. As the early modern period dawned, European powers competed with one another for commercial or military advantage. When the old trade routes to the east were shuttered to Europe with the rise of the Islamic Ottoman Empire in what is now modern-day Turkey, European traders were forced to seek new routes to access the lucrative markets of India and China. Propelled by new ship design technology, the first Europeans began to map out new areas, first navigating around the Horn of Africa and eventually crossing the Atlantic. Christopher Columbus's voyage for the Spanish crown in 1492 marked a definitive point in the history of the world. Although often credited with discovering America, he was not actually the first European to reach the new continents. The Vikings, northern European adventurers and farmers, beat him by nearly 500 years when they landed on the frigid shores of Newfoundland in Canada. However, the Vikings only stayed in Canada for a year abandoning their remote outpost after fighting with the local natives and enduring a harsh winter. Their stories were lost to myths and legends and did not greatly change the destinies of the peoples of either world. Christopher Columbus's journey to the West Indies and later to Central America itself was different. It would open up the Americas to the rest of the world. Knowledge of these new lands and their people spread, starting a bonanza of exploration and colonization by the European powers. Columbus himself did not even realize that he had discovered a new continent, believing instead that he had actually reached India, which is why Native Americans are sometimes called Indians. The Spanish were the first Europeans to encounter the Mesoamerican civilizations, and thus chocolate. By the early 16th century, accounts had been written about this strange, bitter, frothy beverage the natives drank, and how cacao beans were used as a currency in the Mesoamerican world. Initial reports seem to suggest many Europeans were initially impressed by the supposed medicinal properties of the cacao drink. Others, however, seemed to detest the exotic drink. Whatever their feelings about chocolate, the Spanish intended to stay and expand their range in Central America. Less than 30 years after first contact, the Spanish had conquered the Aztec Empire as the result of a military campaign of the conquistador Hernán Cortés and exerted their dominance in the region. The Spanish had exploited the internal divisions of the Aztecs, who had themselves only conquered the region a couple centuries earlier. They found many native allies amongst the Aztec subjugated peoples, which swelled the ranks of the Spanish forces. In the years afterwards, the Spanish began to acclimatize to and eventually appreciate the chocolate drink. Eventually, it came to be imported into Europe usually prescribed as a medicine for any number of ailments. Since it was expensive and exotic, only the European elite would have had the opportunity to try it. Nevertheless, the seeds were sown, and in time, Europe would wholly embrace this new product. Now, a final word should be said about first contact. 
The initial contact between the Old World and the New proved to be devastating for the native inhabitants. If you recall from our last module, we discussed how for thousands of years, the Americas were separated from the rest of the Old World. This meant that the Aboriginal inhabitants of the Americas had no natural immunity to many of the common diseases of the Old World. When they came into contact with Europeans, they also came into contact with their diseases, such as smallpox. The consequences of this contact produced one of the greatest tragedies in the history of humanity. Scientists estimate that nearly 90% of the populations of North and South America were wiped out in just a generation or two. The diseases spread like wildfire and moved far faster than the Europeans themselves did, spreading from one native group to the next. Europeans did not conquer the Americas because they had better weapons. They conquered because of the diseases they brought.